The United Nations in Sudan oversees a vast humanitarian operation. Working alongside other aid agencies and the government, we give food aid to one in ten of the population, support health care and education. And now we are trying to help thousands of people return home after years displaced by conflict. The independence of South Sudan in 2011 dramatically reduced the size of Sudan and along with it, the UN's aid budget for this country. Yet needs have increased. The months following the independence of the South have been destabilizing. The economy has nosedived with the loss of oil revenue, inflation is spiraling, and conflict has reignited along the new border. These changes are having a devastating impact on the lives of Sudanese people. With the food prices rising, families across the country are struggling to feed themselves, while more than a million have had their lives shattered by the new border conflict. Humanitarian needs are growing, yet with a sharp drop in funding, more now has to be done with less. More than a million people remain in camps in Darfur, a decade after the conflict that drove them there. In South Kordofan and Blue Nile, thousands of war-affected civilians are living in desperate conditions, cut off from aid. Increasingly, we are investing the money in building the resilience of these communities, helping people re-establish independent lives, and helping those who want to return to their original homes. Across Darfur, water pumps are being installed, and health centers and schools are being built. But countrywide, the challenges remain immense. Even without the emergencies in Darfur, South Kordofan and Blue Nile, Sudan's needs are staggering. Malnutrition in Sudan is so widespread that the nation as a whole is over the internationally recognized emergency threshold. Red Sea State, the place with the worst rate of malnutrition, is almost double the national average and is not even in a conflict zone. More than a quarter of Sudan's children are not attending school. And literacy is low. In some states, less than half the population can read. A fifth of the people in Sudan do not have access to basic health care. And there is little medical support for pregnant women, with a trained attendant present at less than half of births. Dying in childbirth is a serious risk every mother takes. We are confident that in an emergency, we can get the money needed and get it fast. This is already happening. The yellow fever outbreak in late 2012 was met with a swift response. In a matter of days, the World Health Organization had the emergency funds needed to buy vaccines. And by January 2013, the government declared this health emergency over. We are serious when we say we are building local capacity. Most of our staff and many of the aid organizations we work with are Sudanese. And this year, we plan to invest more than ever before in developing the ability of Sudan's government and civil society to prepare for and respond to emergencies themselves. That way, the solutions we are providing will last, and the money being spent is being invested in the future. Whether because of conflict or poverty or economic crisis, the needs of people in Sudan are great. While the Sudanese government is ultimately responsible for the welfare of its own people, the United Nations, along with other aid agencies, has a vital role to play in supporting it to meet these needs. Working together, we are determined to help give the people of Sudan a better, brighter and more hopeful future.